So for this one, the student example on your note sheet, you are supposed to write an equation in slope intercept form that goes through these two points. So what is slope intercept form again? Y equals MX plus B. So what two things do I need to identify in order to write something in slope intercept form? The M and the B, which are the slope and the Y intercept. So we're going to learn different forms. Um, in order to know, like not get them confused, just look at the name. It tells you exactly what you need. You need your slope and your Y intercept. So is it easy to tell the y-intercept from what I'm getting? No. Yes. Does it tell you anywhere in there this is the y-intercept? No. It does not tell you. And if I graph these two points, are, would either of them be the y-intercept? No. So I need to maybe start with my slope first. And if you think back to yesterday when we did the vocab, I told you that, hold on. So back to the front of the vocab. Remember I said that there's a bunch of different formulas for slope. So if I don't have a graph that I'm looking at, I just have two points. Which one would be the best formula to use? Exactly. So when you have two points, it's probably easier to use this formula. Could you graph both the points and then try and figure it out? Yeah, but we'll just save ourselves some trouble and use the other formula. Um, the only problem is I did not give you this formula on a test. So you do have to have it memorized. Luckily, today for your exit ticket, you can use your notes. I just know for the test, you have to know it. This is on, flip this over. All right, so then label one of them as x1, y1. Does it matter? Elijah, where are you going? You're not invited. All right, so label. Label one of them your x1, y1, and the other your x2, y2. Does it matter like which one I make? Which one? No. No. Did you guys label it like this for the most part? This one, x1, y1, and this one, yeah. x2, y2. Yeah. So then I'll show you the opposite way, just to show you that you still get the same answer. All right, so you don't have to erase yours yet unless you get a completely different answer. But we'll make this one x2, y2, and this one x1, y1. All right, so if I plug it in like this, I get 4 minus 6. And then 5 minus a negative 1. All right, if I label it like this, this is how I put it in. Questions on that? So what's 4 minus 6? Negative two and then five minus a negative one. Six. Oh, it is a positive six. All right, remember we add the opposite, right? So five plus one is six. Now, if you did it the other way, like you labeled this one x2, y2, and this one x1, y1, you got something similar, didn't you? You got like two over negative six, right? When we simplify our fractions, do we get the same final answer for the slope? Nope. Yes. Yes. What does it simplify to? Negative one third. So think about what number goes into both of them. That would be two into both of them. Um, over here, you probably got one over negative three. But what did I tell you to get in the habit of doing for the negative sign? Mm -hmm. Just move it to the numerator. All right. The placement really doesn't matter in like the grand scheme of things, but it'll help you when you're graphing. All 
right? So that way you remember to go down one instead of like up one. Make sense? Any questions? All right, so we have negative one third for the M. Now let's find the B, the Y intercept. So now that we have M, we can actually find B. All right, because what did we say that X and Y represent? No, X and Y, what did I say they represent? Or that they can be. Thank you. Can you leave it on this one? Sure. Any point on the line. X and Y represent any point that's on the line. So we have two points to pick from, don't we? They gave us some points that are on the line. Does it matter which one I pick? Does not matter. So I'll pick one that I think is easier to work with. I think that one. So if I use this point and I plug it in so that I can solve for B, what's going to be my Y? Six. Six, good. Equal to negative one third times X. What is X? Negative one, we got the negative one third from here. And then plus B. All right, and now that B is the only variable, we can actually solve it. So does that make sense? People love to like forget how to do that part. So just don't forget it like on your ice cream or on your test. So start simplifying. What is negative one third times negative one? One third. One third, good. And then how can I get the B by itself? Subtract. You subtract it, good. Subtract one third on each side. What is six minus one third? You probably use your calculator for that. All right, for your Y intercepts, it's okay to like make it a rounded decimal. For your slope, I'd probably say no. Not. So here, so this is how you enter it in your calculator. Let me show you. All right, so we have six minus one third, and I always say put your fractions in parentheses. All right, so the calculator can read it right. So we have about 5.7, right? That is our B value. Six minus one third is 5.7-ish. Questions about that? All right, and then just throw it together, slope intercept form. We said M is negative one third and then X plus 5.7. Questions about this one? All right, yes, Kyle? So for the Y intercept, I would say make it a decimal because then when you graph it, like, I don't know what that is as a fraction, but when you graph it, it's harder to estimate the fraction than it is the decimal. So at least 5.7, you know, is between five and six. So six, six. So I would say make it a decimal for your y-intercept. For your slope, leave it a fraction because you need that rise over run. Yes, Marilyn? Yes. All right, any other questions? So if I asked you, say like on your exit ticket, what is the slope of this? What would you tell me? Negative one third, or would you tell me negative one third X? No, do not include the X in your answer box. So it will be wrong with the X, all right? So it's just the number in front of the X. All right, any questions? Yes. 
What method did you use? Subtracting what there is. Oh, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you do it by hand. I feel like nobody knows how to do it by hand. So that's why I do. that's why I did it. That's why I just use a calculator. But yeah, you should get the same answer. Any other questions? All right. So then now on the paper that you picked up today. So look at that one, it has the same graph on that page. All right, so paper you picked up today. This one's going to be the teacher example. And the instructions aren't written like what it needs you to do, but you can write these instructions and it's the same instructions for all three examples. So this one is the teacher. All right, so write the equation of each line in slope intercept form. What is slope intercept form again? Y equals MX plus B. So again, what two things do I need to identify? The M and the B. All right, with the graph, you know, I think it's a little easier, but let's go through it. Probably the B, the Y intercept is easier to see. So we'll start with that one. So look at your graph and think about what does Y intercept mean? Look at your vocab, what is, your, what is, what is a Y intercept? Yes. where the line crosses the y-axis. So y-axis, are we talking about the vertical axis or the horizontal? Vertical. Vertical. So where does it cross on the y-axis? At one. All right, is this a positive or a negative one? Positive. Positive, right, because it's above it, it's above the zero, so that's the positive side of it. Um, there's, I notice on your guys' notes, there's no example for like a negative y-intercept. So just to like throw an example in there, it's negative. If this was my line in the green, what would be my y-intercept for this one? Negative three, right? So just adding that one in there just because, you know, it's not on your finger. But yeah, it can be negative. For the red line, it's a positive one. Any questions so far? All right, I'm gonna erase this one down here too. All right, but we found the B. Now we need to find the M, which is for slope. Since we're using a graph, which formula do you wanna use for the slope? All right, I would agree that rise over run is probably the best one. Can you read out the names? Okay, leave it on top. This is Alexa and then who else? Okay, and you have to say that. Ricardo, can you just say that? So we want to pick this one 
Yeah. No. Oh. Where do we want to pick our Great. dots? Okay. That, that right okay. there. And why do we want like this dot? Good. So like, remember I said it goes through the crosshair, right? So when you're like playing video games or going out hunting, I don't know. Do you want your target to be like over here? No. no, you want it to be right in the middle. So I want dots that go through a crosshair. Um, can I use this dot over here? No. The yes. one that's on the white yes. Yes. yes, it also goes through a crosshair. Are there any other ones on this line that I can use? No. No, no. so just those two. But that's all I need. So once you find two dots that go through a crosshair, connect it with like a triangle. All right, you really have to connect it with the triangle, but I think it makes it easier to concretize over run. It can be a triangle like this, or if you want to put it on the other side, that's fine. Either way, you're still counting your rise and your run. And you're counting it from going to this dot to that dot. So from left to right, like when you read. So going from the left dot to the right dot, how much is my rise? One, and is it going up or down? Yeah, yeah. So it should be a negative one. And then what is my run going from this dot to this side? Three. Three. Good. One, two, three. And then if it's rise over run, it should be three over negative. Rise over run. Negative one over three. All right. And then that's the two things we need to identify. So throw it together. Y equals negative one third X plus one. Any questions? All right, so that's how you get it from a graph. Yes? When, um, well, All right, uh, let's do the class example next, the one right next to it. We'll go through it a little faster this time. So here's the class example. And again, we're writing it in slope intercept form. So let's start with our y intercept. That's usually easy to see. So think about it first. What is my y-intercept for this one? Positive or negative? Very good. It's on the positive side. And it's right here where it crosses the y-axis. All right. Um, so that's your y-intercept. Now let's find our slope. So can I use my y-intercept as one of the dots that go through a crosshair? Yeah. Yes, what are some other ones? Do you guys know how to read the points on a graph? Like, can you tell me the points? Like, here's one, I'll give you one five, right? Because it goes x, y. Okay, what's the color? Oh, one over negative. Okay, one negative one would be. Yeah, one negative one would be here. So no, try again. Wait, positive one is one up. Negative one up one. Good. Is there any other one? Yeah. Can you tell me a number? There's one that's left. Where is it? Two negative one would be here. Oh, so two. Oh, negative two. Negative two. Negative one. Negative one. Good. Oh. All right. Yes. So all of those dots can work, but you just need two of them. All right. Now I'm just going to show you something. It can be any two dots. I can connect these ones if I wanted to, and I'll still get the same answer. Then if I connect to this one, it's not that. Because no matter what I do, I have to reduce the fraction at the end anyway. So really just 
Again, two dots, connect them, draw your triangle, and then reduce them. So let's start with the green triangle. What's my rise going from this dot to this dot? For the green triangle. Four. Okay, we're going up one, two, three, and four. What's my run for the green triangle? Two. And then it's rise over run, four over two, which simplifies to two. All right, let's see if we get the same thing for the red triangle. What's my rise for the red triangle? Two. What's my run? One. And then two over one simplifies to two. So it really doesn't matter. But my suggestion would be probably just do the smallest triangle you can make so that you won't have to reduce it. Does that make sense? All right, so then throw it together. We get y equals 2x plus 3. All right. Try the one that is right next to it on your paper, the student example. I'll go over the answer in like a minute, and then you'll have time to work on your practice before the answer. Anyone get something other than three for the y intercept? All right, three is correct. So good job. Oh, and and oh, e equals three. Um, so now let's find the m, the slope. Which so can I use this dot to find the slope? We also need the other one. I need another dot. Can you tell me where it is on the plane one. with like the right number one? Number one. 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 Going up one. One. Right one. One. So on one one, we can use that one. What are some other ones I could have used? Negative two. Negative one, two. Negative one, good. What else? That's it. There's one more. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Negative five. Um, negative five. What? Negative five would be out here. <laughs> no, uh, negative one. Uh, negative one up yeah. five. So yes, negative one. All right. Any one of those you could have used. So let's just okay. pick one. Let's say I'm picking this one. These two. What's my rise? Three, two, two. Positive or negative? Positive. Negative. Because to go from this dot to this dot, I had to go down two. But you have to go from the left dot to the right dot. Like how you read a book, right? So from left to right. What if you read Just this? go down two. That's why it's negative. You'll never go to the left. Because you have to go from the left dot to the right dot. would it happen? All right, what's the run on this one? One, and then put it together, rise over run, you get. Two. Or just negative two. Yes. Negative. Yes, because negative two divided by one oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is negative two. Any questions? No. All right. So we have only like six minutes before we do the exit ticket. 